Hey guys, welcome back to Voice Bootcamp. My name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss about the installation of Cisco Unified Communication uh, Manager. Now, Unified Communication Manager can be installed uh, two ways. Uh, one is a standard a standard installation. The other one is through Prime Collaboration, and I'll be showing you both. Now, Cisco Unified Communication application can run on virtualized uh, environments such as VMware. Now, you can use uh, VMware uh, virtual machine to create them on a, on a Cisco approved platform or uh, you can of course still buy a physical machine and install it just regularly. Now, on certain version onward, Cisco has stopped uh, probably moving toward everything virtualization pretty soon. Now. Cisco does provide you virtual machine template which uh, you can download it from Cisco website uh, and based on the template you must uh, do continual installation. A specification based on hardware that provides more hardware flexibility and then for example added support for UCS, Hewlett, uh, no longer support HP, um, IBM platforms are listed on the VMware compatibility list. Cisco Unified Computing System, or UCS, is an architecture that integrates computing resources such as memory, CPU, and input-output uh, interface, uh, IP networking, into from a single system. Uh, on a single server, you could share the physical memory among multiple virtual machines. Now, Cisco Unified Computing System is built from the following two components. UCS as a B series or UCS as a C series. The B series B stands for blade, uh, which is a, a chassis based solutions. Whereas a C series a standalone server, just like the way Cisco MCS seventy eight hundred series server used to be. Now the B series server, which is based on Cisco Unified Computing System or UCS, uh, is, is a blade server based on x eighty six architecture. It provides computing resource to operating system and application. The architecture uses a fabric that provides a transport for LAN, storage, high performance computing traffic over a single infrastructure. So this is an example of a B-series chassis as you can see right here. A big chassis where you have a smaller little sl uh, uh, slot where you can sl uh, slide the B-series blade in it. Each B, B series blade is considered to be a computer uh, server, an individual server. So as you can see, there's one B series right here. Uh, one, uh, two, three, four servers can reside on one side and another four servers can reside on the left hand side, right hand side. So you can, uh, all these servers are independent servers. They, have, they could have a different functionality. One server could be for database, other server could be used for Windows, one other server could be used for whatever services that you want. You don't necessarily just have to run call manager on it or VMware on it for that matter. Now, the way these servers communicate, uh, behind the server there is something called uh, a unified fabric uh, which connects all these servers to the, uh, the SAN, to the local area network and so and so. Now, the B-series server uh, support multiple CPU socket. Each CPU socket can host multiple multi-core processor. For example, one B200 blade has two CPU socket, host up to two multi-core processor. So depending on the core, it, it can go 8 CPU, 12, 16, 16 CPU, or hexa CPU. The ability to run multiple unified communication applications simultaneously. Now the component of the B series, uh, the complete solution comes with a uh, chassis itself. You got UCS 2100, 2200 fabric extender. You have 6100, 6200 fabric interconnect switch, Cisco UCS manager, hypervisor, and storage area network. These are the components that are part of your uh, B series uh, solution. Now, Cisco UCS 5100 B series server or chassis, basically uh, similar to like Cisco 6509, which hosts the B series blade. So, if you want to buy two server, you'll buy two blade. 
and these pro, uh, chassis provide connectivity to the uplink fabric interconnect switch using the fabric extender. Now the fabric extender is inserted into the B-series chassis uh, at the one of the bottom layer and connects the B-series blade chassis to the fab UCS fabric which is used to pass traffic between the blade server over fiber connection over ethernet fiber connection over ethernet capable CNA to the fabric interconnect switch using the uh, fiber channel fabric interconnect switch which is a gig 10, 10 gigabit switch capable of tra uh, transmitting traffic from chassis to the fabric and it allows you to connect to the local area network so all the B series blade will connect to the local area network through this particular switch uh, or SAN for example the UCS manager is a software that allows you to create entity in, uh, uh, in your virtualization system. So if you want to create a server, you would use the UCS manager to create a profile for them. So it provides an intuitive user interface to manage all system configuration operations. Hypervisor is a thin software that runs directly on a server hardware such as VMware. Uh, allows you to run guest operating system on top of the physical machine that runs on another layer uh, level and is a foundation element that can that in a cl uh, cloud computing and virtualization technology so in a, in a, in an example uh, cisco use vmware as a hypervisor uh, storage area networking which enables attach of a remote hard uh, storage to your server as if a one big gigantic servers now, Cisco Unified Computing System also features general, uh, general purpose rack mount server. Uh, these are the C series server. Uh, those are like people who do not, doesn't, does, you know, company that do not want to invest money on either big chassis or SAN or may not have the budget for it. Then you may want to go to the C series server. These are individual server, physical server that, used, that we're used to up until now. It's simplified and fast deployment extension of unified computing innovations and a benefit to the rack servers It's still a rack in a rack mountable server still one u or two u depending on the model and it, it does give you an options to run multiple applications on it as well now it is increased uh, it, customer does have a choice uh, of between b series and c series so obviously it provides you a unique benefit that are familiar with the rack package now C series are comes with the different layers. So scale out, you got the enterprise cr uh, class, and you got the enterprise critical. Uh, these model number keep changing, so always take a look at Cisco website for most up to date information. The impact of virtual servers on deployment model. Now application that are virtualized supports exactly the same deployment model as if they are installed on a physical server. So whether you use a physical server or you use a VMware, it, the deployment model doesn't change. You still have single uh, campus design, you still have a uh, centralized multi-site or distributed call deployment model. Some components can be physical server while other components can be virtualized. So you have the options to mix and match. All the pro call processing deployment model are described in this chapter are supported on virtual server as well. Now the installation. So once you have the server ready and everything, you configure your uh, VMware servers, for example, whether you use a virtual machine or you use a VMware, uh, sorry, physical machine, uh, you go through the process of installation. Uh, the process is very straightforward. Uh, however, the option of installation uh, depends on the state of the server that you're installing. If it is a fresh install, meaning the server doesn't have anything, then you would you go ahead and so a basic install. Now, during an, up, uh, during an upgrade, you can also install patch or a release upgrade. So you have the options to do that during uh, upgrade during an install. If you have a Windows version 4.3 still somewhere and you need to uh, upgrade to Linux space, Cisco does allow you to do upgrade, although I'm not sure that how many companies are left behind on Windows 2 4.3, but there are maybe cases where you may have to learn how to do that. You have the options to upgrade from 5.x to 11, for example. Now, 
During the installation, you are required to provide information such as how the server should get an IP address, uh, either static or DHCP. Now, technically, you're not supposed to really assign a server a DHCP address because DHCP, if you reboot the server, there's a possibility the server might reboot, uh, got a new IP address unless you manually reserve that IP address for that server on the DHCP. Uh, for most uh, pra best practice in the real world is to assign server with a static IP address. Uh, although whether to use DNS or not, now that information is start to become very uh, complicated as uh, Cisco is moving toward a lot of SIP and Java client and then client from outside. You start to rely on DNS uh, heavily. Up until now, you could have ignored DNS in some cases and just go ahead and install just an IP address. But nowadays you have to make a decision whether you want to use DNS or not. Now you can still say no during the installation and then enable it later. But uh, in so like I said, in some cases some there will be references to IP versus a domain name. So I would always recommend that at this stage, uh, if you are not going to use Java and everything, then you can simply say no to the DNS. But if you are going to say yes to the DNS, it is very important that you map the IP address of the call manager to the host name that you're going to use and I'm going to show you that to you in your call manager installation uh, how to configure DNS for that. Uh, the, one of the staff that will ask you if this is going to be a publisher or subscriber uh, you, you basically say first node if it is yes it is going to be publisher and if you say no it is going to be installed as subscriber. If you do say no to first node, make sure that you have network connectivity to the first node that already exists as well as you have the necessary credential and um, uh, host name of the call manager. NTP it is, is a must. You cannot continue without defining an NTP for time uh, security password which is used by the publisher for uh, authenticating all the subscribers as you install them. Now. Security password is only required on the publisher. You don't need to define that in subscriber installation. SMTP is optional unless you are going to require uh, email alerting anytime, anytime soon. You can say no to SMTP installation. Now, when you put uh, the CD in and you run uh, you start the machine the first thing it will do once it detects the DVD is going to ask you whether you want to do a, a check on the DVD to make sure the DVD is not corrupted uh, you know if you is a fairly new DVD then obviously it's not a, something that you really need to do so however if the DVD has that you're using has been there for long and you start to see some scratches on the DVD uh, go ahead and do a perform media check to make sure that during the installation it's not going to fail the last thing we really want during the installation that you know at close to the 78 percent and you realize that it can no longer read the DVD and then system will halt. Step two is to define uh, the the product that uh, you are installing. Now if you are going to use a virtual machine and the machine is not configured for a certain type of product it will tell you what products are supported and what products are not supported with this installation. That will depend on your virtual machine template that you use. Then uh, if it does find any version on the hard drive, it will tell you that an existing version, uh, uh, whatever the version that it is. And if not, it will tell you that what version it is going to install. Uh, installation, uh, initial configuration, proceed with the wizard. It's going to ask you, would you like to upgrade any patch? So this is where you want to upgrade during the installation. Uh, you might have the C uh, CD, let's say 10.5, and then all of a sudden Cisco released 10.8, and you want to do an upgrade at the same time. So they, so you downloaded the, let's say the patch, and then you put the 10.5 first, and at, when you come to this window, you say yes, and you point it to that the upgrade version of the uh, file. So that way it will do both the base install and the upgrade as it uh, completes the process. The basic install, uh, because it found nothing on the hard drive, so it's going to give you an offer called basic install and this is where it's going to install it from the ground. It's going to ask you for what time zone this server belongs to, so it is important that you define the appropriate time zone. 
it's gonna ask you if you want to negotiate the uh, uh, interface now because you're running on virtual machine uh, the this configuration is just gonna con give you the auto negotiation because the system relies on the interface that is the physical interface that is configured on the host server for the auto negotiation capability so right now just continue it's, it's gonna ask you if you want to change change the MTU size for the OS default now some uh, operating system protocol requires that you may need to uh, sorry not operating system uh, some routing protocol may require you to change the MTU size otherwise uh, sometimes it can cause problem unless you're sure by unless you are instructed by Cisco or the network admin you may want to just simply say no to this particular option so duplicate a slide here you define the host name IP address mask and the default gateway of the server make sure if you are going to use DNS that you have this host name have a mapped to this particular IP address both in forwarding zone and a reverse zone zone it's gonna ask you if you want to use DNS client if you say yes or no if you say yes it's gonna ask you for domain name and the DNS server IP address this is the username and password for the operating system, not for the web interface. Keep that in mind. This is for the username and password for the operating system. Your certificate information. If you are going to obtain a public certificate, it is important that you put appropriate information here you do not want to put garbage information here uh, it is important because the certificate will contain all the information that you define in this uh, in area so I would simply put your company name locate you know what department you're in location state or country so and so it's gonna ask you if this is your first node now obviously if this is your first node if you are installing the first call manager you're going to say yes to this and the first node is going to define this server as a publisher so you say yes and it's going to ask you for the NTP server address and the NTP server address will be whatever the IP address you of the NTP server now it is extremely important that the server this particular server can reach that IP address if a failure to do so the installation will halt will be, will be stopped it's going to ask you for the security key. This is the key that is going to be used by the publisher to authenticate all the subscriber. Any application that is going to modify the uh, call manager database uh, requires this particular uh, password. It's going to ask you if you want to configure SMTP. I would say no at this stage. And simply define the username and password. And this is the username and password for the web administration or call manager administration so this is the one that you'll be using on day-to-day -day basis sometimes people keep the same username power password sometimes they will use different for example for web admin you might use cucm admin for the operating system you might you might use os admin for example uh, click OK and this is where the installation, uh, installation will start and if everything goes fine it will uh, install it successfully and uh, once the installation is done, depending on the type of platform, it might take 30 minutes to 2 hours uh, depending on how, uh, how slow the servers are or how much resources are available. Now once the installation is done, what the system does, it takes your hard drives, a minimum of 74 gigabit, and it creates a two partition, partition A and partition B. Partition A is where the system will install the call manager for the very first time and it will be isolated is it will be the active partition after six months down the road if you decide to upgrade during the upgrade what it does it copies the database from partition a and put into partition b and upgrade the partition b first so b, partition a always remain intact so once you have upgraded and you want to reboot and switch to b you uh, go to the os administration and there is a menu option that allows you to say switch server you reboot the server after you enable that feature 
and then B will become an active call manager partition where the system will boot from and A will become inactive. So at any given time, uh, call manager after the first upgrade always retains a previous copy. So if you need to roll back after like two, mo uh, two weeks or two days, you can always roll back to the old version. So again, whenever you do an upgrade, whatever the active partition is will be remain untouched. Inactive partition will be upgraded and it is your and our job is to reboot the system with the switch to partition B. Once the installation is done, the web interface uh, is what you need to access the call manager. There are various different web interfaces that you have. Uh, you got the user option, which is now known as self uh, uh, provisioning. You got the CM administration, disaster recovery system, which allows you to manage the recovery, uh, uh, backup and restore. You have the operating system administration for day-to-day -day OS administration. And then of course you have the serviceability page allows you to uh, start and stop the services. Um, these are web interface. If you if you want, you have access to CLI uh, through SSH, and this CLI access gives you enough privilege and functionalities which will allow you to troubleshoot why the web interface is not working. So, like I said, uh, CLI is not the full access to the operating system. You have a limited access, which gives you enough to do your uh, basic administration of the OS. Once you SSH to CLI, you will find a bunch of uh, utility uh, commands such as help, quit, show, set, delete, unset, so, uh, so and so. You can also use a util command to reset admin password, reset, uh, restart the services and few other options that are available. To access the call manager, or once the installation is done, simply go to the IP address of the call manager and on the left top corner you should see the navigation which allows you to access various areas of the call manager platform. And once you log in, uh, by default it will give you uh, 60 days or 128 days depending on what version of a, a demo license and then of course you can uh, uh, apply the real license that you have and which will change this message. So once the license is applied, these messages will disappear. Now I'm going to show you how to install um, VMware, uh, sorry, uh, call manager in VMware. So this is my v VMware server, uh, I mean infrastructure. Again, I won't go to details on the VMware itself. So what I'm going to do is on one of these server, I'm going to deploy a VMware template that was downloaded from Cisco website. So I go to deploy OVF template and the template that I'm going to choose will be based on that was given to me. So for example, I can choose, uh, okay, none of them. So I can choose CUCM 10.5 V uh, latest version and when the template will show me what kind of uh, product I am about to install, uh, what version the product is, the vendor, along with what it will be the download size plus the disk size, if a thin provision, if I do a thick provision, which will be 110 gig versus only 512K. So I can choose to change the name, so I can call this, let's say, AT&T uh, call manager. I can choose the configuration type, like you know, am I, am I designing a solution for 2,500 users or 10,000 user mode? If I choose 10,000, I would need four CPU, uh, 7,200, uh, 7,200 uh, megahertz reservation, memory six gig with six gig reservation and 110 gig uh, disk space. If I reduce it down to 2500, the requirement change, of course. Storage, I'm going to do thin client, which will not reserve the entire hard drive space. And then click finish. And you will see the AT&T stuff right here, as you can see. And there I'm going to go to edit virtual machine. And I'm going to go to CD-ROM connect 
and go to the data store to map to the ISO file that is the CD-ROM file so this is the ISO file that we downloaded from Cisco website that provides you installation for call manager 10.5 click OK now I'm going to go to console and then I'm going to turn this uh, machine on The installation is checking the hardware to see if uh, the hardware will valid, uh, validation uh, passes or not. Now, as you can see, the the installation pro program has defined that you know this particular virtual machine is configured for Cisco Unified Communication Manager, and uh, Unity connection is not supported, so therefore it is not something that you can select. So click OK to continue. It found no version on the hard drive right now, so I'm just going to say yes. Proceed with proceed with uh, wizard, and here say would you like to apply any upgrade patch? Now, if you say yes, then it's going to look for that patch file. So it is important that you have access to that particular patch file. Now, right now there is no patch file defined. So it's going to ask you if you want to use D, uh, DHCP on this machine. So we're going, to, we're going to say that whoops. So I'm going to log into the DNS server. This is to one of our DNS. Alright, so I'm going to log into the DNS server as I said. Uh, DNS server is running on a Windows Microsoft, Microsoft DNS server. So I have a forwarding lookup zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, let's say, uh, sorry, not that, uh, CCNP up 2 And there I will add a host. We'll call this AT ATTCM pub. And the IP address will be 64150. Now it is very important that you create a associated PTR, which uh, must be configured in your DNS so there is a reverse zone that I created called reverse zone lookup and in the reverse zone lookup for that same subnet I should see the AT&T reverse zone created right somewhere here there you go so to do a quick test I can go to command prompt and I can do a ping 150 oh, okay let me do a flash no, actually, I gotta do uh, put a switch A. When I put a switch A, it should re return that uh, host name attncmpub.ccnpcolab.com2.com. So it is extremely important that this part is configured uh, because if you are going to use a DNS for AT&T environment, for example, we must define the DNS address. In this case. 142, uh, 172, 16, 1.120, and the domain name will be ccnpcollab2.com. Administrator, this is the OS administration. So 
So typically you want to keep it something like OS admin. Uh, your certificate. Is this your first no? So that's where the publisher comes into play. So you say yes, it is. Your NTP server, you can define up to five NTP server. NTP is very vital, vital for logs and uh, timestamps. This is where you define the password for your database. So database, so we'll say voice bootcamp. And no to SMTP. Now this is for your uh, support related tasks. We can just simply disable it. Define the OS admin, C, uh, CCM admin straighter, and you can put the password as you prefer. All right, so installation is ready to rock. So all you have to do is click OK, and you are done. So give yourself about a half an hour to 45 minutes, sometimes maybe one hour. It instantly, if, if depending on the server's resources, it might take uh, approximately an hour to complete the installation. So that's how you install the regular way. Now I'm going to show you how to install and deploy call manager using Cisco Prime Collaboration deployment. Prime Collaboration is a C Cisco's um, network management software which is an application that is designed to assist in management of Cisco Unified Communication application. It allows you to perform tasks such as migration of older software version of clusters to a new virtual machine fresh install, upgrade on an existing clusters. Cisco Prime Collaboration Deployment has four high-level function. Migration an existing cluster, perform an operation of an existing cluster such as upgrade, switch version after an upgrade, and restart. Changes IP address, fresh install. So these are some of the main function of a Cisco Prime Collaboration Deployment. Now, you have to be keep, keep in mind that Cisco Prime Collaboration Deployment feature are supported for a specific version of the software. So there are some compatibility issues that you may need to uh, look into. Now to install Prime Collaboration itself, these are the minimum uh, respect that you need. Two process involved in uh, Prime Collaboration. One is to create a virtual machine in VMware first and then add the host and create the clusters in the Prime Collaboration. So a virtual machine is a software computer that acts like a physical computer but runs on an, uh, runs an operating system and application. An hypervisor, which is like a VMware, is a platform for running those virtual machines and allows for the consolidation of computing resources where multiple virtual machines can share the same CPU, same memory card, network interface card. A software called hypervisor, in our case VMware, ESXi is installed on a physical hardware in a virtualized data center and act as a platform for your virtual machine that you create. So this is my, as you can see, this is my VMware, right, for example, which is running um, HP ProLine 380G5. And on this particular server that has eight CPU, two core, um, eight, uh, sorry, 632 GB memory, on the same software uh, server, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight virtual machine created. So I have actually eight c different server that are running on one physical server. And that is achieved because of this application ES ESXi hypervisor. The hypervisor provides physical hard work resource dynamically to all the virtual machines as needed to support the operation of those virtual machines. Now again, just because those uh, software, uh, those um, machine, virtual machines are software-based, it does not mean you, you know you can do, you can choose however memory you need or however hard drive, uh, how big hard drive you need. You have to still stick to the hardware resource to make sure that the combined hardware space, uh, sorry, com combined hard drive space of all the virtual machines should not exceed the physical hard drive that you actually have. Now, hypervisor allows virtual machine to operate with a degree of independence from underlying physical hardware. Now, to configure virtual machine uh, using OVF template, first, which is provided by Cisco, first we need to obtain a template 
and then use a web client to deploy that. Now you can use a web client or you can use a 32-bit client, it's up to you. Uh, uh, VMware is moving toward web client for all their network management. OVF template contains the necessary configuration parameters that are needed to configure a virtual machine to be used by Cisco. So you go to the host that you want to impl implement and then click on deploy. Then define the location of the template. In our case, we're using a web server to download our uh, OVF template. You can also browse it from your local computer. It will show you the product name, the version, the vendor, uh, many other different uh, information such as the memory and the hard, uh, hard drive space. It's asking you to define a name for your virtual machine such as the AT&T name that we defined. It allows you to select the number of users just like the way that we have done it, 2500 users. Thin client versus thick which is very important if you're doing it for lab makes sense to use thin client for production you want to select thick client because for performance issues set up the network interface card that you want to use for this particular virtual machine and then of course first option last option is to power on upon deployment uh, we're going to make sure this is turned off because we're going to use the prime collaborations to turn this feature off on. Now this is an example of all the virtual template that I have created. They are different virtual machines for different functionalities of the call manager. The only difference is that none of them are actually installed. We just created the virtual machine. Next step is to use the prime collaborations install on each one of these virtual machines. So we log into the prime collaboration. First thing we do, add a ESXi host. So this is the host we're going to add. These three IP address that you see. So define those host name, the root access, the password, any label that you want to define. So you want to do this for all three servers in our case, or however many servers that you might have. Next step is to define a cluster. So we're going to install the, let's say, head office cluster, which contains call manager publisher, call manager subscriber, maybe uh, instant messenger or uh, presence, for example. They all belong to single cluster. So we're going to define a new cluster. We you can call it cluster HQCUCM cluster. Select the IP address this server will, you know, we will have the publisher. Uh, you can select the role of this publisher such as music on hold or that whether you want this publisher to be the primary call processing or that you want the TFTP server should be enabled voicemail should be enabled or not or that this is a publisher or subscribers if you check this option obviously you are creating a publisher and any given cluster that you define you can only have one publisher in that cluster then from the virtual machine the list of virtual machine that the uh, prime collaboration identified from those so adding those servers you need to select which virtual machine you want to install this uh, application on so we're going to select the unified pump.10.5 uh, define all the username for operating system username for the application web application security password SMTP very similar thing that everything that we just went through from the uh, regular installation but here we're just creating the answer files. This is for the certificate information. Your DNS settings, NTP settings, uh, network settings such as the MTU size, we just leave it as it is. And then we add a new install task. Once the server has been created, the next step is to add a installation task we go to task menu select add install task select the cluster you want to install which will be automatically checked if you do not want to install the presence for now you can uncheck this option but if you do not uncheck all of this server will be ready uh, in a uh, in the sequence for installation so click next select the ISO file you must upload the ISO file to prime collaboration 
and we do that by using win scp protocol to transfer iso file from the local machine to the prime collaboration uh, database uh, server so prime collaboration will look at the available iso and see which one is valid and matches the one that you're trying to install it will select that ios as so an iso file then you define when do you want this you know, installation to start a specific time at midnight uh, do it manually upon execution by the administrator or do it immediately after finishing this wizard so we're going to say immediately after finishing the wizard click next then you can decide which one will be installed in which order publisher first present second subscriber night last you can switch them around if you want to but publisher has to be installed first and as it installed each server you want to define a pause or continue an action so that you know what to do when the first one actually ins complete the installation click next and the installation should be on its way now in our case what we're going to do we're going to log in to our web vmware And on the left hand side, data center host, I will select. So all these virtual machines should be created. Then I go to prime collaboration deployment. I'm gonna log in. And the very first thing we're going to do is go to add, uh, inventory ESXi. And as you can see, all my host has been added. Then I will go create a cluster. And these are some of the clusters that we already have used. So I'm going to go to define a new cluster. So let's call this rack five sorry rack four hq cuc -C cucm cluster next add a node we'll call this host name the ip address So product type, music on hold, call processing, primary TFTP, publisher. And then we're going to scroll down until you see Rack 5 call manager, which is right here. Select that. Click next. And you define your username and password, for example. Select the DNS, assign DNS, and the DNS will be collab4.com or the 5.com, rack 5. Must select that. Select the NTP server. MTU, I'm not going to change that. Keep it as it is. Time zone is important. Apply the Los Angeles time zone and you're done. So the next step is to do is go to inst task, install, 
and we're gonna add a new task for each uh, well, wrong cluster but that's fine you get the idea select the ISO next do it immediately and then click on finish as soon as you click on finish it will then go ahead and start installation right away and you will see that on the server it will go online and you'll see the installation process take place behind the screen so that's pretty much it and how you install um, UCC, CUCM and uh, either, either manually or through the prime collaboration so that will be the end of this video uh, we'll be seeing you in the next